So what does extreme volatility look like in 3D? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video here. So welcome back options traders and good morning to everyone. And we've talked about extreme volatility in previous videos, but I thought this would be very applicable to mid July with all of the volatility that we've been seeing and are still seeing. And we've talked about this effect of Trumpification and how all options tend to go towards a 50 delta as volatility rises. And unfortunately, a lot of times traders devise their strategies around this idea, thinking that somehow that's the maximum level is this 50 delta. And that's true for a very large range, but eventually it breaks. And as we're going to find out that they all start heading towards delta one, and we're going to see what that looks like in 3D as well. So before we do that, as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe. Definitely appreciate it very much. And it is going a long way into promoting the channel. So let's start off with the idea of Trumpification. Remember what this is. It's time and volatility's effect on Delta. So as the time to expiration or volatility increases, your deltas tend to move towards a half or towards Delta 50. So increasing time or volatility are two ways to give a stock a better chance for moving higher or lower. And because of that, in the money options have a better chance of falling out of the money, and therefore your deltas will fall towards a half. And conversely, your out of the money options have a better chance of moving in the money. So your delta will rise toward 50 or delta one half. But once again, a lot of times traders hear this, they understand the concept, kind of even makes intuitive sense. But what they don't realize is that if you get into periods of extreme volatility, that these limits can be broken. So just to review the idea of Delta again, there's a connection between Delta and probability. It's not a perfect one, but it's pretty close. So recall that Delta is approximately the probability for an option to expire in the money at expiration. So the deeper in the money an option is, the better the chance for the option to remain in the money and therefore have a higher delta. The deeper out of the money, the better the chance for the option to remain out of the money and therefore keep a lower delta. So remember that time and moneyness create different probabilities. Moneyness, again, is this generic term for an option's strike relative to the stock price in, at, out of the money are individual terms of this idea of moneyness. So now let's take a look at the in the money options and the out of the money options. So on this graph, we're looking at time to expiration on the bottom, the horizontal axis. We're looking at the probability of being in the money at expiration on the vertical. So notice if we don't have a lot of time till expiration and we have an out of the money option, there's a very low probability that it's going to become in the money. It's out of the money, there's no time, so it has a very low delta, let's say maybe close to 20. But if we keep that same strike, whatever it is, and we increase the time to expiration, look what happens. Those deltas are going to rise. And we're going to find that they're going to start getting much, much closer to delta a half. This is the Trumpification effect that we just talked about. Now the opposite occurs for the in the monies. Those are up here on top. So again, if we have a very low time till expiration, but it's an in the money option, there's going to be a very high chance for that option to remain in the money. So it's going to have a fairly high delta, maybe 80% or so. But as we increase the time to expiration for that same strike, look what happens. Those deltas start to fall. And that's because we are becoming less confident that it's going to remain in the money. And of course, we would expect it to fall towards delta one half, this black line. So again, as a recap, the idea that most traders believe is that you're in the monies and out of the monies tend to move towards delta a half as time or volatility increases. Now that's true up to an extent, but unfortunately when they see graphs like this, they assume that this is a ceiling, that this is the absolute highest that this delta is ever going to get to is delta a half. And that is absolutely not true when you are faced with extreme volatility. So if volatility rises far enough, your out of the money options eventually are going to rise to 1.0. They're going to blast right past that delta one half ceiling. 
And so traders must keep this in mind when selling options during periods of high volatility. Actually, you need to keep that in mind anytime you're selling options because you might unexpectedly enter a period of high volatility. But if you're already in a somewhat volatile market, you have to realize it might get worse. And if that happens, don't think that these option deltas are going to be limited to 50. So to see this in action, we're going to first go to the OIC's website and take a look at a pricing model, and then we'll come back and take a look at our 3D graph. So now we're into the OIC's website. That's the Options Industry Council. And let's just pick some stock and strike prices. Let's say the stock is at 100, and let's pick maybe the 110 strike. I'm going to start off with 30 days to expiration and volatility of 20%. Interest rates, I'll leave at zero. We choose calculate. So the call option is not worth much, 12 cents, and it's got a very low delta of a half. Now remember, this whole idea of Trumpification says that we can increase time or volatility, or both. So watch what happens if I go to, let's say, 60 days. See, now my delta has gone a little bit higher. If we go to 90 days, now we're up to 18. Let's go up to 120 days, up to 22. Let's go to 360, we'll go out to a year. See, now we're at 35 delta. What happens if we go to 400 days? 36 delta, let's go up to 600 days. 40 delta, let's go up to 800 days. 43, so you can see what's happening. 45, it looks like we're hitting the ceiling. Now let's set this back to 30 days. Let's do the same thing with volatility. There's our initial option value. Let's go to 30 vol. And again, we're getting an increase in deltas. Let's go to 60. We go from 14 to 32. Let's go to 90 volatility. There's 40 delta. Let's go to 120 volatility, 45. Let's see if we can hit 200. There's a 54 delta. See, already we've gone past 50. And a lot of times when traders hear this idea of Trumpification, they think that 50 is the limit. Now, obviously, 200% volatility is extreme. I'm not going to say it hasn't happened. It has, in fact, fairly recently during COVID, GameStop went up to about 600%. So it does happen, but it's rare. But watch what happens if we keep pushing further. Now we got 63. Let's go up to 500 vol, 75, look at this, 800 vol, 86 delta. Let's go up to 1,000 vol, 92 delta. Now, what's going to happen is that eventually, when you hit delta 1, you just can't get any higher than that. And that's because the highest price that an option can be is the price of the stock. So once we hit a theoretical price of this call as being 100, you're just not going to make it any more valuable. You're not going to change your deltas no matter what you do to time or volatility. But the main thing to see is what happens when you increase time or volatility. It is making these out of the money options move towards delta half. And then if you keep pushing it, especially on the volatility front, it's going to push it past delta a half. Now we could get exactly the opposite if we had gone with an in the money option falling out of the money. So let's now go over to Excel and take a look at this idea of extreme volatility in 3D. All right, so this is our 3D model in Excel and we are looking at stock price versus volatility and the resulting deltas. So the way that you read this, we have stock prices on this axis ranging from 20 to 340. Going this direction, we have volatility going from 20 to 320. And on the vertical axis, we have deltas ranging from zero to one. Now these colored bands show us regions for deltas. Just makes it a little easier to categorize and say that these are basically a certain range of deltas. And the way that we find those answers is down here. So if we're in this blue region, we are somewhere around zero to 10 delta. In this red region, we are in 10 to 20 and so on. Now this graph is drawn for a 110 call with the stock at 100. Of course, we can vary the stock price, but that was the initial setting. This is exactly what we saw in the OIC's calculator. 
So to read the graph, let's start with a simple one. Let's bring the stock price all the way down to a very low setting. We're going to bring the volatility very low so that we're sitting right at this corner. And if that's true, take a look at this. It says that we have a zero delta. And that would be true. We have a 110 call with a stock at around 20 and no volatility. That option's gonna be dead flat. You can see it's very smooth in this region, just not going to get any benefit at all. But now let's keep volatility very low, but let's move the stock price higher. Well, eventually we become an in the money option, even at very low volatility. And what happens at a very low volatility, it's all intrinsic value. So we go to Delta one very, very quickly. We're just following this outside edge right here. All right, so that's a fairly simple way to start out reading the graph. Let's now come up to a stock price of 100, which was the initial setting, and let's increase volatility. So again, think of this as a north-south street this way and an east-west this way. So if we hold the stock price constant at 100 and we walk this way, eventually we hit this red band. Our deltas have gone to about 10 to 20. We keep walking, we hit the green band, we're 20 to 30, then we're into the purple band, and eventually we just peek out here into this blue, which is in the 40 to 50 deltas. That's the trumpification effect that we saw. However, this isn't the limit. Notice that if volatility starts to rise, it now pushes us up this outer edge, and we can, in fact, hit delta one. Now there's another way to read this. We could look at an in the money option. Let's put the stock up to 120. Remember it's a 110 strike. So if the stock is 120, it's now in the money. And if we increase volatility and walk this way, what happens? You see how that red line is sloping down? That again is the trumpification effect, at least for a while. If you keep walking this way, in other words, increasing volatility, you eventually hit the green you eventually hit the purple, and then eventually touch up here into the blue. But if you increase the volatility, that will absolutely take you up to delta one. That's the part that traders miss. They think that in all cases, we hit this delta one half and that we just don't move anymore. So you can tell that there's this kind of this funny little wrinkle in here. And that's the part that I want you to see. Let's see if we can change this around a little bit swing it around this way, maybe get a different look at it. All right, so there's a little look at it. You can see this corner over here, we come up on this hill and then we wrap around to this side. But if volatility comes up, that's what can push us up to this edge and definitely push us up into the Delta one. You can see these bands starting to curl down. That's the Trumpification effect if it's in the money. But if volatility rises, it's gonna push you to Delta one. That can be a real danger if you're not expecting it. All right, so let's come back this way, see if we can get a different angle on it. There you can kind of see it. It bows in here and then comes back up. See, it's a funny relationship that traders just aren't used to seeing when it comes to volatility, stock price, and your deltas. There's a nice little look from above. Get this nice little wing that flares out here, and then if you eventually walk up this side, you are going to hit Delta one. Now, yes, it is an extreme look. It is probably not gonna happen in most cases, but that's not the point. The point is you need to understand your options, your options theory, and the relationships of volatility and Delta and stock price. And that's what's going to allow you to make better decisions. Because if you are placing your strategies, thinking that these Deltas are going to top out at a half, you just might be left with some very unwanted surprises. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.